pressure to push it away? No. But here because it's loosely attached, a little increased excessive fluid will swell up without building a pressure in the tissue. So more and more fluid will keep on accumulating. Could you understand it? That this connective tissue, it is where the skin, it is very loosely held with underlying tissue. So when capillaries leak here, fluid come out. But because this tissue will move forward, it will accommodate the extra fluid. It will accommodate extra edema, edema fluid without raising the local pressure. So more fluid will come. So this area will become edematous earlier. This is one of the very important clinical points related with the edema of renal system. Is that right? Periorbital edema. Secondly, I told you this edema will be all over the body. And this edema will be pitting edema or non-pitting edema. You have a concept of pitting and non-pitting edema or no concept? Okay, let me tell you. I will just uh, try to give you the concept of pitting and non-pitting. These three very simple diagram. It's a side discussion from our lecture. But let's suppose this is capillary. This is arterial end. This is venous end. Again, this is capillary network, arterial end and venous end. These are three patients. Patient A, patient B, patient C. Now, Normally what happens, you know it. Hydrostatic pressure is high, pushing the fluid out. And osmotic pressure is pulling the fluid back. And in this way, uh, fluid is being added from the capillaries continuously to the interstitium and taken back. Is that right? In first patient, in the first patient, patient A, there is increased hydrostatic pressure. Due to some reason, hydrostatic pressure becomes very, very high. If pressure in the capillaries become very high, then leakage of the fluid will be too much. Leakage of the fluid will be too much. Now fluid is extra filtered because of the high pressure, but endothelial cells, endothelial cells have normal permeability. Only the pressure dynamics are changed. Is that right? Now, when fluid normally leak out, a little amount of protein also come here. But this little amount of protein cannot be pulled back. Normally, right now in your body, wherever the fluid is filtering out, with that fluid, a very little amount of plasma proteins also leak out into interstitial area. But this plasma protein cannot be sucked back by the capillary system. But nature does not allow these plasma protein to accumulate here progressively these plasma protein are drained by the lymphatic system and lymphatic in the end drain into veins. In this way, in spite of the fact that capillary do lose a small amount of proteins, these small amount of proteins do not accumulate into tissues, they are drained by lymphatic system. Am I clear to everyone? Now, we come to the first patient, high hydrostatic pressure, excessive fluid come here. Now. Lymphatic system is working well. So fluid is coming here too much. But do you think proteins will accumulate with the fluid here? No. Is that clear? Now we come to the patient number two. In this case, hydrostatic pressure is normal. <coughs> Problem is with oncotic pressure. Plasma proteins are let, less and osmotic pressure is less. In this case, also the fluid will be filtered. Will be normal or more than normal? Fluid which is filtered is more than normal, right? But do you think excessive plasma proteins are filtered? They are normally filtered. But here lymphatics are also working. So if lymphatics are functional in patient B also, even if small protein which is leaking, it will be drained. So it means edema formation is patient in patient A as well as in patient B. In patient A, edema formation is due to excessive hydrostatic pressures. In patient B, uh, edema formation is due to reduced oncotic pressures. But in both cases, whatever small proteins are filtered, they are successfully drained by lymphatics. So mainly fluid accumulates. And this fluid, right, th this will be, some of it will be drained by lymphatics. But usually there is so much fluid that it overwhelms the lymphatic drainage system. Now we come to the third patient. In the third patient, 
hydrostatic pressure is normal hydrostatic pressure is normal even oncotic pressures are normal do you think patient can develop the edema now can patient develop by some mechanism edema now yes that is by blockage of lymphatics lymphatics eventually drain into venous system here now if there is some disease which has blocked the lymphatic system for example some parasites or lymphatics are blocked by the cancer cells or lymphatics are blocked by the fibrotic process inflammatory process by any reason if lymphatics of the system are not tissue are not working the small amount of proteins which leak out they cannot be drained over the months and year those very small amount of proteins keep on accumulating and when these proteins will accumulate pathologically here which were supposed to be drained by lymphatics and these proteins will increase the osmotic pressure here and hold lot of fluid and whatever fluid is coming out all of it is supposed to go back but a small percentage of the fluid will be sticking to proteins held by the proteins so here edema will be formed but this edema in patient c is different than the edema in patient a and b what is the difference the difference is that here edema fluid is held tightly with infiltrated proteins now if you press this uh, tissue with finger here is only fluid when you press with the finger fluid is displaced edema fluid is displaced right so you will be producing a pit here with the finger you can produce a pit here so this is called pitting edema this is called pitting edema in the same way in patient number b again if with the finger you uh, press that tissue against some bone edematous tissue with little 30 second pressure what really happens fluid is displaced and significant because fluid is not held here with anything so it will be displacing from that pressure under the finger and this will be also pitting edema but if someone has edema due to lymphatic obstruction fluid is held tightly with the deposited proteins with the finger if you press can you produce significant pit no so such edema is called non pitting edema it is this concept is clinically very very important let me tell you a very classical example let's suppose there are two sisters who are having breast cancer it's very unfortunate but anyway and unfortunately cancer breast cancer has gone advance and both of them develop swelling in the arm both of them develop swelling in the arm in one sister you press the edema fluid and pit is produced and in other sister edema of the arm is non pitting what's the difference both have breast cancer in first case probably breast cancer cells have obstructed the veins and when we draining veins are obstructed or compressed what happens that blood is going to the arm through the arteries through capillaries fluid is coming out but because veins are blocked so hydrostatic pressure in capillaries goes up and she develop edema due to increased hydrostatic pressure as cancer cells are uh, blocking the veins or compressing the veins cancer mass is that right or uh, cancer, uh, cancer infiltrated lymph node may be compressing or clamping a vein so she will develop pitting edema the second unfortunate sister what happened with her that breast cancer cells have gone to the lymph node and lymphatics and her arm lymphatics are not draining well so she is accumulating progressively proteins in the she is progressively accumulating the proteins in the interstitial fluids of the arm and osmotic pressure in interstitial fluid become high and extra fluid is held there and she develops what type of edema non pitting edema 